I'm going to show you how we turn this into this. So re-anodizing parts isn't anything new, and this isn't going to be a tutorial on how you anodize parts. Uh, the difficulty is with Shimano cranks specifically, they have this steel spindle that is permanently bonded to the aluminum crank arm. In anodizing, you cannot have the steel in with the aluminum because it will completely eat away at it, leaving both the spindle and the crank arm itself destroyed. Um, so the way I'm going to try to get around this is to completely seal off the steel using this 3D printed sleeve that I made. It, uh, threads all the way into the threads on the crank arm, pressing it up against the body here. And then I'm going to seal this edge with a silicone sealant because the silicone should be resistant to sulfuric acid that they use in anodizing. Uh, this filament is a bit special as well. It's polypropylene filament, which also is completely resistant to sulfuric acid. So if you try to do this yourself, make sure you look at the filament you're using. This is the only one I could find that actually claimed to be stable in sulfuric acid. All the usuals that like PTG, ABS, ASA, PLA, none of those would hold up in sulfuric acid. So that's how I found polypropylene filament. Um, and then when you're printing with this, also look up the specs. It's kind of picky about build surfaces. What I ended up using was a PEI sheet with Dimafix uh, to bond everything to it. And then I printed it all on a raft and I made the raft quite a bit bigger than normal. I made the raft about 35 millimeters big to help it adhere. Uh, if you're having adherence issues, you can actually take some packing tape, which is also polypropylene typically, and put that on your build surface and print against that. Um, that works pretty well. I got lucky and the Dimafix worked well, worked for me. I was hoping to get away with stuff I just had laying around. Um, but yeah, so this will thread onto here with some sealing on it and then hopefully it comes back from the anodizer in good condition. All right, so I wanted to give you guys a quick rundown on how I modeled this part in Fusion in case you need to make any adjustments for your own. I'll link to the Thingiverse file I posted on this so you can download it for yourself if you need to use it. I've also got the Fusion file in there so it's easy to edit what I've currently got. But here's the sectional view of it. It's threaded into the end of the crank where the preload bolt will usually go and then this just comes all the way down to the end of the base on the crank and presses up against it to seal things off. Put a little bit of a chamfer on there to let a little bit more sealant come around there to kind of act like a little o-ring. Uh, it seemed to work pretty well um, to get you a better view on the section. Um, you can kind of see how this is built if I get rid of the plug. So that's it without the sleeve on the outside. So it's just a proper threaded plug that threads into the end and then you've got your the rest of your sleeve here so pretty simple part uh, for the thread pitch on the crank that i was using which was one of the cx cranks from shimano it was a 20 by one thread um, and if you're going to be 3d printing make sure you click the model button in fusion or else you won't get any threads uh, so pretty straightforward piece there. And then on the 3D print settings, I use Cura at 0.2 millimeter layer height, pretty standard. Wall thickness was 1.8, but I did it with 100% infill, so it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, you can see it's just solid the whole way through. I wanted to give it as much protection from the acid as possible. Uh, here's the temperature settings I use that seem to work pretty well. The print was nice and clean. The threads worked out well. Um, the print wasn't super stuck to the bed, but it was stuck well enough that it didn't come off and it printed nicely. Uh, so 80 on the bed temperature, 230 on the material. Um, I'll also link to the filament I used in Amazon. It's actually pretty affordable. Um, speed, just did 50 millimeters a second. I don't. I wanted it to have good layer adhesion, not, I wasn't too worried about the speed on this one. I uh, did set the fan at 50%, just mostly thinking about the threads, wanting them to come out fairly clean. Uh, seemed to work well. Uh, I didn't use any supports. I did use a raft with a 35 millimeter margin though. So definitely a lot of extra material there to help it stay stuck down. And the raft is nice to help things separate pretty cleanly. I wanted to make sure that the end of the piece stayed in a nice condition. 
But yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, as you can see from the pictures earlier, it did turn out pretty nice. So that was great. Uh, the anodizer I use is local to us. They're called Zimpact. They did a great job. I'm sure a lot of other anodizers would be willing to help out as well, but some may be a little bit weird about a part that has some steel, some aluminum. Uh, they initially told me no until I talked to them about this idea and they decided that they were okay with it and my customer was okay with the risk as well. So uh, first time I did it, worked out well. It was a pretty fun little project though. So overall pretty happy. Hopefully this will help you guys out if you want to add some color to your own cranes. Um, if you need some of these parts 3D printed but you don't have a printer, just hit us up. Uh, email us through our website and we can get you set up with something. But again, yeah. Any questions, just leave them in the comments below and we'll do our best to help. Thanks a lot. Bonus tips for anybody that's never had anything anodized. Most shops will charge you per batch, which a batch usually is a pretty good amount of parts. So you can get your cranks anodized along with some other parts. Like in our case, we also did some hubs and then the freewheel dust ring for this customer. And it cost exactly the same. We even threw some other parts, some of our churn stand adapters in the mix too, just because we had room left in the batch and it was going to cost the same either way. So make the most of the money you're putting towards it. What's up? <laughs> Happy <laughs> You getting excited? Uh, <laughs> That's what <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pee.